tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. When we talk about LGBTQI, it has something to do with same-sex attraction and actually being in an intimate space with someone of the same gender. And yes. the thing that I want us to talk about now is because I get questions like, is being sexually active with the same sex a mortal sin? <laughs> Did Jesus mock it as a mortal sin? Yeah, that's something that comes up every now and then, especially yes. with clients. Yeah. Yes. And, and that is the question. Did Jesus say you are going to hell if you love somebody else? Jesus mm -hmm. said we are going to heaven if we love. Yes. There were no extra rules added to that. Those extra rules came when we started mixing up a patriarchal system um, and a control system which wanted to force us into a specific way of living. So yes. if I'm physical with somebody else and it is done in love, with respect, and again with the, the idea of praising God, mm -hmm. sex can be such a beautiful form of praise, Yes. then how is it wrong? Yes. Yes. While yes, it is a beautiful, beautiful expression of love, sexuality, or being yes. sexual and sensual, it does not mean that it is then okay to sleep around. Yes. Yes. So, of and, course. And, <laughs> but again, there's no judgment to those people. Again, I go back to my question Is it hurting myself? And is it hurting somebody else? Am I physical with a person or am I having sex to fill a need or am I having sex with a person out of love and yes. again into the exaltation of God yes thank you for answering that question father because another thing that we need to uh, clarify because you know the common question again that comes up after the thing that you said is if you have sex with someone of the same sex you're hurting God <laughs> So, I don't even know where that statement came from because, um, of course, both of us were oriented in a certain way. But please shine the light on that particular statement while I check the questions for you. Sure. I'm, I'm, I don't know how to answer that really. How are you hurting God by expressing love? I think we hurt God when... We go against the soul lessons that we decided to learn and I believe before we are born we sit and we plan our lives we, we, we plan the experiences that we get and that is with God so that when we are born and again that, that is a big answer for me when when it comes to are we born uh, 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 with our sexual orientation I believe so, yes. And I believe it is done in order to learn specific lessons. So it's express that. Yes. How is that wrong? Yes. The, the, the thing that to me is wrong is if we refuse to live that expression. Um, yes. You and I are representatives of the LGBTQI community. It has happened to me, honestly, you know, when I wasn't out to the family, I would act in certain ways that were uh, very unpleasant because I realized for myself that I haven't resolved yet for myself and wasn't brave enough yet to actually tell the world what my preference was. And I know that it's not actually, it's not like I owe the world that explanation about my preference. It's just that you just want to have a closure on your identity. So one of our colleagues, Victoria, uh, Reverend Victoria said, I will be in attendance surrounding you with love and acceptance for all that you are, as written on a hanging wall in my home. Connection, I am you, you are me without each other, we are nothing, all is one, all is love, sending love and blessings up and out. That's for both of us and Bernice also sent her blessings. 
And one of our members said, I'm dealing with some major upheaval in this matter. Evangelical Christian family rejecting me for being a gay son. So I actually invited him to join our group because I just have this instinct to be compassionate to people who are freshly coming out of their family. And especially if the parents are also transitioning from discrimination to being able to accept their children. I believe that slowly we are heading towards that. It is, yeah. it is not just an idle dream. And the work that we are doing now is hopefully adding towards that outcome. Yes. Um, and so, so, yes, the families do love. And a lot of the expression um, of condescendment is out of love. And it, it is a mistranslated love. Yes. And it is, it is our society, unfortunately, of judgment that makes them scared. Yes, it is exactly. our society <laughs> that, um, you know, the parents love or the family loves. But then the question comes in, what will the neighbors say? Or what exactly. will the minister say? Exactly. And <laughs> little do they know that the minister and their family are struggling with the same thing. Yes. Even more because in if, if you are clergy, then people for some reason look up to you because you are now supposedly holier or you are supposedly closer to God, which is not the truth at all. Mm -hmm. For me, being a minister and being clergy means that I am very much human. Yes. That I am called to serve. So yes. this, this pedestal that you are put up on as a clergyman, and I've gone way off topic now, but this is quite important. It's is, important, it is. For me, I am trying to be as human as possible. Sometimes I let out a curse word and um, a lot of people have told me that is why they love me because I don't pretend to be anything other than human. Now, if that is true, how can we then want the clergy or anybody else to, how can we be uh, scared of their judgment? We yes. have our own issues. So any every priest has their own issues. So we are not there to judge. Priests yes. are there and the community is there to love and to spread the message of, um, if, if you are Christian, to spread the message of unconditional love of Jesus Christ and yes. the Christ consciousness. You mentioned because I think it's also the case for me because I'm also a minister here in the Philippines and it's actually quite puzzling for a lot of my friends especially they're not used to having metaphysical ministers but the blessing for me is that i have practical magic and the support of v81 radio manila yes. and also my co-producers you know before i got this show i was invited to represent the lgbtqi community last june because it was pride month and someone saw the potential of me having my own show and the reason why i'm mentioning this is because it has a lot to do with uh portia de rossi's statement a couple of years ago and she was saying you know when you're a celebrity or when you're in the limelight because yes. when you're a priest in your case of course you're a public figure you're handling a community so uh Although it's it's just a growing number of followers now for me, for the show, I know it's so important for me to remain authentic about yes. my strengths and at the same time, the aspects of me that are vulnerable. Because like you mentioned and what your community has mentioned, the redeeming factor for them and the thing that makes them closer to you is that you're accepting that aspect of you which is human and at the same time there's an aspect to every human being that's actually divine so best of their content so that we can move our lives forward especially during this interesting time in our global village so remember everyone here in practical magic we remind everyone that you're actually the magic that you've been waiting for so thank you again to my co-producers and also our team, Dax, Ralph, 
uh, also Jason, and at the same time, Mites, thank you so much for all your help. And I just want to invite everyone for a simple prayer protection before we all uh, end the show. So gently close your eyes. Feel the power and presence of the Almighty. And together, let's affirm the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Thank you, everyone. And before I end the show, I just want to say congratulations to the United States of America. You have a new president. And we're praying that the very best actually comes out for all of you under this new presidency. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you so much, Father Carol. And thank you. Your ministry. Satnam, everyone. God. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.